Steve Pasquale. He's at the back of the pack. We've got Brown and Wincup on row one. Van Gisbergen and Davison on row two. Supercars go nocturnal at Sydney Motorsport Park. The sequel. And blasting away is Will Brown. He's got a beautiful start on the inside as they make their way to the apex down here. But ranging up on the outside very quickly, very quickly is Wincup. He's going to give him a run for his money. Will tries to hold him up as high as he dare. And they have cleared off from the rest of the field on the run into turn two. The first five cars almost made the same start off the road. Is that Jacobson? That was really wild now. He's gone, caught up. Van Giesbergen pushed Davison wide. And then Davison went wide at turn two by himself. Brody Kostecki and Cam Waters were able to grab Will Davison at turn two. That was interesting watching Will. He continued to try and stay as high and wide as he dare down there at two because he was fearful of Win Cup getting up the inside at turn three, which was precisely what Will Brown was trying to do to Anton Di Pasquale last week, seven days ago. Up the inside goes Percat. Does he make a clear run down here to the left-hander at Corporate Hill? No, he has to drop in back behind. Brown, Wincup, Van Gisberg and Kostecki, Waters, Davis and Percat, Hazelwood, LeBron and Slade. That's the top ten. Tim is just covering into the right-hander. In behind him, it's Fullwood. Repco Kirkcamp, what a shot. Todd Hazelwood, Dunlop Super Dealers entry. He's tucked in behind Jack LeBrock in the truck assist entry. And those two leaders have skipped away slightly from Shane Van Gisbergen. Will Brown will clean him up at the end of the first lap with a nice little margin. It's 0.6 of a second. Wind cup swallows and gulps some cool air in the front of it. Don't come across the tight side, so. And he had to do that because the wind cup undercut was going to get him. So he had to respond to wind cup. Nice and hard, nice and hard. Hold your brake down, hold your brake down. Nice. nice. Exactly on the spot. See where the black marker is? Right at the axle centre line. Perfectly stopped. Oh, we had a little bubble. That's oh, right. No. Problem with the right front for Will Brown, and this is going to be costly. This is going to take him out of any prospect of a podium. And they've got another wheel nut drama. Oh. Uh, that is an eternity. That'll be a 20 second stop. Remember, that's what go, got go, him go. last time. That's what got him last week. What have we got happening down here? So, Jack Smith getting all crossed up. He's getting some help in the process with Jake Kostecki. Down at turn two, and the battle continued at three. Oh, and uh, oh, I think he might have actually given him, <laughs> given him one by return. Giving him a fair one over the hill then, hasn't he? Yeah. I don't know whether he escaped the road or not. It would have been good to see the other side of that camera shot. I'm not sure what the uh, <laughs> full stop was on that one, but I suggest it wasn't pretty. <laughs> and Smith has now come into the lane. It's got a serious wheel alignment problem as we speak. Yeah, I think that's what you'd call return of serve. Uh, Paul, black flag, a pit lane drive through penalty for car 99. Black flag, pit lane penalty, car 99, exceeding the pit lane speed limit. Oh, Brody Kostecki. Tough day for Erebus today. It's Barry Ryan, team principal for Erebus on the pit wall. As we watch Shane Van Gisbergen rejoin, and I think that was his teammate went through was so that's Jamie and there's Shane in the background meantime Will Brown's gone faster in sector one than any other and he's 1.2 seconds further up the road than Anton Di Pasquale Will having been dropped down because of what happened in the pit stop car 17 track limits exceeding track limits that's Will Davis and getting a bad sportsmanship flag for using too much of the track as well Chas Mostert Tim Slade they're on screen here at the moment so there's only four cars now. Fullwood, Jacobson, Yorden and Jake Kostecki that haven't taken their compulsory stop. And we do need to explain that if you keep on doing it, they will give you a drive-through penalty. Yeah. So at the moment, you've been given a bad sportsman's flag. It's effectively your warning. And if you keep on doing it, you'll be doing what you just saw Brody Kostecki do and do the drive-through. And he looks pretty much in control of this. In fact, won't surprise me that it's a reasonably easy pass based on the differing tyre conditions. The 
teammates. Gary Jacobson still actually the leader from Luke Gilden. He's making his uh, solo driver debut in the main game. That was a little bit of front left locking there for it's Shane. In fact, I think he's got a problem. Or did he just carry a lock break for a long period of time? That looked pretty evil, didn't it? It did. It was locked for quite some time. And uh, it doesn't look like it's an issue now. He's cleared him down the inside. That's a change for the effective lead. And uh, job done. But that actually didn't look too nice at all. He carried that break lock for quite some period up into turn nine and then ten. So I told a little lie before, Neil. Mm, it does happen a bit. James Courtney has actually been given a five second penalty. So it's not the drive through the up through the warning they get with the bad sportsmanship flag. He's now given a five second penalty to his race time. So he's just been awarded that. He's in 15th right now. Sportsmanship flag at car six. Bad sportsmanship flag at car six, exceeding track limits. Cam Waters. And this is Luke Yulden, car number 26 in the Penride entry, and down the inside, Jake Kostecki, who was having that vigorous battle with Jack Smith earlier on. Big night for Luke. Had a very brief chat to him in the garage. Asked him how it was all going, and he said, you know, I just dip my hat to the people that drive these things every week. Because all bad sportsmanship flag, car 25, bad sportsmanship flag, car 25. Exceeding what, track limits. Why Moss. doesn't it seem to call out the field? It's like a bingo. It's like bingo. Pull this move off. Turn I, two, turn four, turn eight. I, I, Pick I, a number. thinking four. I think coming off four. Place your bets. It's probably his best run, but... It's a little bit dependent upon what that change of direction out of two into three is. We've seen Will Davison get a little loose. The car's battling there. You can see the level of oversteer. He's gathered it up right at the end of the corner. He's probably close enough. If he can get through the middle of turn two here nicely, takes a narrower line, just gives him a bump. That's the gamesmanship because that'll leave him very, very close for three. He's trying to come off three. Got two sideways, but he's close. This is the spot we were talking about, and he has a lunge. Oh. Not quite. That was close. Nice move, but that's the right thinking. So he rat tat tatted on the rear bumper down there at turn two, which was all part of the strategy to get at him at turn four. But then it broke sideways a little bit at turn three and ruined that party. And now he's got to do it all again. He's got the speed. A bit of wheel spin going on there. You can hear in the background and the respective crews. Brad Jones Racing and Dick Johnson Racing. And there is Andre Heimgartner, Macaulay Jones. And is that Fabian? Yep. Lane for keeps coming off there. They're all together. Oh! oh. No way. <laughs> I've never that's, seen that. That's, that's a bit evil. So they, at one point there between one and two were three wide. Well, it was sort of two and a half wide, wasn't it? And here's the bump on the way into the corner. Oh, I would not like that going in there. So it's caved in the right rear rear bumper. And, and uh, Macca, for, while Macaulay Jones is busy wrestling all of that, he just got a bad sportsmanship flag for exceeding track limits as well. Exceeded terror limits on the one into turn one. <laughs> uh, I think Heimgarten has also just copped a warning. So we're just working steadily through the entire entry list. So five seconds effectively the margin between the two Red Bull cars. So Shane's well and truly got this stitched up. We have not resolved this. Well, OK, so Chad? Yeah, I was going to say it's a bit harsh to ping him for exceeding track limits. He's in the garage at the yeah. moment, so he's out of the race, guys. Um, okay. Broken steering, maybe contacting Macaulay Jones, he said, and he's out of the race. Yeah, it is. I've just, just been confirmed on the computer. So he made a move between four and five then. Look at this little battle. Hazelwood up on the inside of Jack LeBrock, side by side, to the right-hander at nine. And Todd making very good use of that speed that you referred to a few moments ago, Mark. So Hazelwood might get stuck into this little battle further ahead, although there's only, when they cross the line this time, it'll be, what, three or four laps remaining? It's still four laps four remaining. Laps. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, two penalties coming up. Car 25, a five-second time penalty. Car 25, a five-second time penalty, exceeding track limits. And the same for car 11, a five-second time penalty. 
OK, so Chaz Mostert, who was 11th. Anton Di Pasquale, who was 13th. And James Courtney, who, or not was, I should say, is 14th. He's become so strong at just managing those tyres in these races where tyre sensitivity is an important part of the story. That shot in the totem shows us what's going on with Nick Perkat and Will Davison. They're still at it. They'll be at it all the way to the flag. Out of the hairpin now for the last time for Van Gisbergen, who's already had 12 victories in 2021. Two quarters remain. He's come into the weekend with a 338-point margin and he's giving us all a demonstration as to why he wants his name and why he should have his name on the trophy at the end of the play. Down to the chequered flag and Shane Van Giersbergen makes it victory number 13 in 2021. Beautiful work and a whopping, whopping 16 second margin at the end. He was saying last week they weren't fast enough. Man, uh, they've made some ground. I know there's been some anomalies with the DJR Mustangs, but that was a mega drive, as David Couch had just said to Shane Van Giersberg, and it's his 53rd career win for SVG. Celebrating at the Red Bull Ampol Racing Team, and justifiably so, with a 1-2 for the team, stretching the championship lead for Van Giersbergen and uh, proud men and women in that outfit. And I think we dip our hat also to Will Davison tonight because of the incredibly mature drive under extreme pressure for him. So he just withstood every attack from Nick Perkat. And he's come home in third position for the final spot on the podium. Great way to celebrate for everybody at Triple Eight. This is their 250th round this weekend. And for all of the men and women that have been in that place, since they arrived and got involved in supercar racing. I think just Dane said to me today that Mark Dutton's been at every one of those since the start of the Triple Eight era and the way that they've gone about their business and they have dominated through the course of various cars, Ford and Holden, and they're again showing their prowess again tonight. Confirmation of the results for you and race number 23 falls in favour of Shane Van Gisbergen. and it ended up being 17 seconds when Jamie crossed the line. So huge margin. Congratulations to Shane on a beautiful drive. Will Davison he drops in behind his mate Jamie Wincup and that was an excellent performance given the pressure that he was under for the majority of the race. Hazelwood, LeBrock, Slade, Waters, Pye forward. Uh, the top 10, then Deep Pasquale recovering into 11th position, then Brown, Mostert, Jones, Courtney, Kostecki, Coulthard, Winterbottom, Smith, Jacobson, Goddard, Randall, uh, then Brody Kostecki, tough day at the office for Erebus, followed by Yulden, then Kirk Kostecki, and unfortunately for Andre Heimgartner, he ended up parked up in the garage.